Booker T was doing commentary and walked out as well. Later that week on SmackDown, Michael Cole called Booker out on it, and Booker T's response was this interesting. Is too, Booker, this. you said that this whole walkout was orchestrated by this small group of people, yet so. you walked out as well, so you're a follower. Let me tell you, I had nothing to do with that. I'm totally neutral. I had to go to the bathroom. I thought the show was over with. I, <laughs> I remember watching this. Michael Cole pressed him, and this stick of Booker T said, I had nothing to do with that. I had to go to the restroom. I thought the show was. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're going to check out 12 WWE Inside Jokes Explained. This should be a very interesting one by Tap Out Corner. We're going to get right into this video. We're not going to waste any time. Definitely want to see what some of these inside jokes were and if I even knew what they were in this particular video. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this one. WWE fans will understand all these jokes, especially the ones at the very end. But don't worry, I'll explain them. This first one, though, is hilarious if you understand it. Before the 2017 Battleground pay per view, the New Day were in the ring with their opponents, the Usos. Big E wanted to let Jimmy and Jay know what they were coming for and said this We want that gold, sucker! And that battleground, we're coming for you! Usos, Usos! Uh, what was Big E really gonna say? Oh, uh, yeah, we. <laughs> classic 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 promo from booker t oh uh, we coming for you mm. <laughs> well watch this clip we take what we want and after we take lex luger and the giant we want the gold sucker hulk hogan we coming, we coming for you, you nigga while recovering from an injury cm punk <laughs> decided to take clip. a commentary if you knew anything about the best in the world then you knew he was gonna make some inside jokes while commentating he was great see on if commentary. you understand this one you know i was the king of the ring too guys you know that? uh i don't ha have you on my list of past winners yeah yeah i won the uh the, the tournament we had in rio de janeiro oh really, oh, really? yes <laughs> of course cm punk never won king of the ring the joke punk was making has to do with the origins of the intercontinental championship the story that WWE told was that pat patterson became the first intercontinental champion in 1979 after winning a tournament in rio de janeiro mm, in reality there was no tournament and the whole thing was made up that's just funny. like cm punk saying he won the king of the ring that's eight a, days before they one. fought at crown jewel <laughs> la knight and roman reigns met in the rain for a contract signing. During the signing, Ellie Knight said, because while you failed over and over again, while you were busy doing suffering succotash, <laughs> Ellie Knight was referring to one of the cringiest oh, things Roman Reigns God, has so ever good. had to do. Back in January 2015, Roman Reigns confronted Seth Rollins on SmackDown and dropped this infamous line. You are a sniveling little suck-up sellout full of suffering succotash, son. When the oh, Usos and the New God, Day faced God. off in a rap up That was awful. That was one of the worst promos I have ever, unfortunately, had to witness. That was awful. That was literally one of the worst promos of all time. It was just bad. Whoever wrote that for Roman Reigns, you couldn't have had his best interest at heart. There's no way. But the fact that that was approved, ah. Uh, this was a young Roman, so he really had no other choice. He had to kind of play ball. But even he knew that was fucking awful. But it's good that we have the Roman we have now that can kind of, he has free reign to kind of be more of himself. Off, you knew things were going to get heated. However, I don't think anyone This was a classic this. segment. Hey, Big E, let's just keep it PG. You know what's good. Just don't get all rated R like oh, your boy, boy Xavier, Xavier Woods. <laughs> That was a good one. That's still one of the best segments they had going against each other, man. That was Here's a good where one. things get spicy. In January 2017, private photos of Paige leaked online. Yep. Some of them showed her and Xavier Woods doing some, yep. well, R-rated stuff. Yeah. On the topic of rap battles, listen to this shot John Cena took at The Rock and see if you understand the reference. Uh -huh. And after Classic April one. 1st, you won't be making no more movies. You're going to need surgery on your face just like you had it on your boobies. 
No, John Cena was not making that up. The Rock did have a boob job, sort of. In the late 90s, The Rock underwent gynecomastia surgery. It's a procedure for men that corrects overdeveloped or enlarged breasts. The people's champ had an excess amount of tissue on his chest, so in 1998, he went under the knife. In fact, rumor has it that the reason The Rock briefly wrestled with a shirt on was because his body was healing from the surgery. Uh, this next one has been a running joke for over too. 20 years. At the Beware of Dog pay-per-view in 1996, WWE was promoting their online chat by showing Shawn Michaels using the service. What made it hilarious was it looked like HBK was using a computer for the first time. This became a running joke. Yeah. Anytime a computer was put in front of Shawn Michaels, he always had trouble or had no idea how it worked. Finally, That's in 2020, funny. at NXT TakeOver <laughs> in your house, it came full circle, with Michaels, Triple H, and Road Dog all having technical difficulties. Who says WWE doesn't do long-term storytelling? That's this next inside <laughs> joke shows just how much of a team player Randy Orton is. In 2016, Edge and Christian got their own show on the WWE Network. It consisted of a bunch of skits, and one episode featured Randy Orton. In the skit, Edge played a doctor, helping Randy work through his issues. This was a spoof on Randy Orton taking anger management classes in mm -hmm. real life back in 2006, yeah. due to him having trouble controlling his temper. However, see if you get this joke. Where's the restroom? It's just down the hall on the right. Is this yours? Yes. Would this be considered a purse? It's a man purse. I hate to tell you this, but Randy Orton actually did this in real life. Kind of. In 2003, a woman named Rochelle Lowen joined WWE and worked as a valet. She wasn't familiar with wrestling and didn't know everyone's name, which led to a problem when Lowen bumped into Randy Orton backstage. Orton was upset that she didn't know who he was, so he snuck into the woman's locker room and put lotion and baby oil into one of Rochelle Lowen's bags. Probably because it resembled it, the story became that Randy Orton crapped inside Lowen's bag. Now you see why Randy Orton needed to go to anger management class. Bro. <laughs> So because she didn't know who Randy Orton was, this nigga decided to go into her personal belongings. Yeah, Randy was a menace on and off camera. I've never heard that story before. That's why I don't know who you are. So you go through my things. That's wild. Randy is Randy was wild. <laughs> Take a listen to this next clip and see if you know who John Cena is referring to. Hey, John. <laughs> hey, listen up, Braden Walker. It's Brad Maddox. Don't remember Braden Walker? I can't blame you. In 2008, a wrestler debuted on the ECW brand Braden named Braden Walker. Walker. He had previously wrestled for WWE's rival, TNA, under the name Chris Harris. Walker debuted on July 8th, wrestled two matches, and was released on August 7th, That's making wild. him one of the most obscure WWE wrestlers of all time. In 2011, That's as part wild. of a storyline, <laughs> Vince McMahon was relieved of his duties and Triple H took control of WWE. Yep. However, things turned to chaos under the game's leadership. This led to a vote of no confidence by the majority of wrestlers and staff Staff, and they all walked out. Booker T was doing commentary and walked out as well. Later that week on SmackDown, Michael Cole called Booker out on it, and Booker T's response was this interesting. Is too, Booker, this. you said that this whole walkout was orchestrated by this small group of people, yet so. you walked out as well, so you're a follower. Let me tell you, I had nothing to do with that. I'm totally neutral. I had to go to the bathroom. I thought the show was over with. I, <laughs> I remember watching this. Michael Cole pressed him, and this thing of Booker T said, I had nothing to do with that. I had to go to the restroom. I thought the show was. I remember that. Because I'm like, wait a minute. Why is Booker T here? I thought you walked out. You know? I had to go to the restroom. I don't know what you're talking about, Michael. <laughs> this is why Booker T is a fucking gym, bro. <laughs> I love Booker T. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that, okay? Leave me out of it. Booker's response is based on something that happened in real life. The 2011 Elimination Chamber was the first time Booker T did commentary at a pay-per-view. The five-time WCW champion didn't prepare himself for the nearly three-hour event and had to get up in the middle of a match and go to the bathroom. At least Booker learned his lesson and waited until after the show the next time he had to That's go. Funny. John Cena is just full of obscure references. Towards the end of 2011, Kane returned to WWE and attacked Cena. The next week, John addressed it and said, this. What I don't understand is the fact that there is a monster on the loose. A monster who wears a red mask, covers himself in fire, and gets real and easy around the holidays or trips to the dentist.
There are actually two jokes hidden in that line. The first about Kane getting uneasy during trips to the dentist is a reference to Kane's original WWE character. In 1995, uh, yeah. Kane debuted as Isaac Yankum, DDS. The character is Jerry Lawler's private dentist, and his appearance and entrance music were all based on that gimmick. Yeah. Now, Cena's second line about Kane getting that uneasy around the holidays is even more obscure. Very early in Kane's career, before he was signed by WWE, the bigger machine wrestled for yeah. a small company called USWA. While there, Kane briefly played a character called the Christmas Creature. The, the persona Christmas was short-lived, making John Cena's reference even more obscure. <laughs> On Raw funny. in 2014, Christian <laughs> was wrestling a match against Jack Swagger. During it, JBL made this comment about Captain Charisma. Chris has got a nice face. A good face for the Compared company. to what? A Moa statue on the Easter Island? A blue... Oh, uh, yeah, nah. I, I think he... I think he, I know what the inside reference is. I believe Vince McMahon always thought that Christian was just ugly. Like that's a that's a thing I believe Vince have actually said. Like he always thought Christian was ugly. Dot would look better than Christian's face. Okay, get ready to hear this joke explained. So during a plane ride, a WWE writer was talking to Vince McMahon. McMahon shared with the writer they didn't like Christian's face and called it ratty. Vince then suggested they should do the Kennedy gimmick. No, not Mr. Kennedy. The Kennedy McMahon was referring to was William Kennedy Smith, who was charged in 1991 with raping a woman. During the trial, the woman who accused Kennedy had her face hidden by a blue dot uh -huh. on TV. When Vince McMahon said they should do the Kennedy gimmick, he meant putting a blue dot over Christian's face. Of course, this is a joke by Vince McMahon, yeah. but nevertheless, it carried on for years and years. Now Christian and Blue Dots are inseparable. Speak yeah, you, you always thought Christian just didn't look good, which is kind of... It's wild. <laughs> Put a blue dot on his face. Get him the fuck out of here. You know, Vince McMahon, I wonder if you regretted making this joke. In the 80s, WWE introduced a wrestler named Virgil, who was the bodyguard slash manservant of the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase. Now, the name Virgil was very intentional. Dusty Rhodes was the booker for one of WWE's competitors, Jim Crockett Promotions, which eventually became WCW. Mm -hmm. Dusty Rhodes' real name was Virgil, so naming a wrestler after him was a joke. Ironically, Virgil the wrestler eventually started working for WCW, where the joke was kept alive. However, instead of being called Virgil, he was called Vincent, which oh, was, of course, a jab wow. at Vince McMahon. WCW eventually went even more direct with it and simply referred to Vincent as Vince. Then, McMahon's son got in on the joke, too, when Vince was renamed to Shane. I guess the real wow. Vince and Shane had the last laugh, though, when they bought WCW. Funny enough, this sort of thing would happen again years later. In 2004, Simon Dean made his WWE debut. Well, his whole... Well, not whole, but major part of his wrestling career his character his name was a rib at somebody else goes to another company a rib of somebody else gets bought by that other company a rib of somebody else that's funny bro Debut. The name Simon Dean kind of was a joke up, funny, made at the expense at the of a former WWE wrestler. Dean Malenko was a retired wrestler and worked as an agent at the time. Malenko's real name is Dean Simon, so as a joke, his name was flipped around and given uh, to Simon Dean. Wow. Now, to learn the secret of how WWE <laughs> set Kane on fire, watch this video. What the hell? What is up with them giving each wrestlers other wrestlers' names or as jokes? That's wild. But it's the wrestling business, people make jokes out of certain things and you may not even realize it on screen you know unless someone tells you about it but comment down below let me know some other wwe inside jokes that weren't listed on this video that you have fond memories of that booker t one i didn't know that was an actual thing that happened to him but it was still hilarious because he said yo i i didn't know what was going on i'm neutral i thought the show was in there so i had to go to the restroom <laughs> That was great. This is why Booker T is great. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on channel Road to 150K. And I'm still here on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champ of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.